What's up, good people? It's your boy Jay Free again, sitting out here in my garage as usual, trying to drop some knowledge on my people, trying to wake us up, you know, hoping that the masses are beginning to pay attention to some of the things that's going on. And the question that I always pose, what are you looking at? Can't you see? Ain't you mad yet? Um, right now, we sitting on the brink of the 18-year-old brother, Michael Brown, who was gunned down by the police in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, another complete injustice being done to our people and i'm just saying i i i myself um am, am kind of happy that the rioting is going on but i don't think that it's enough because rioting is just merely a reaction um to a situation and it and and, and it's actually um it's it's not appropriated action meaning it, it's just it's you know we all over the place when we riot but what we need to do is we need to take that fervor, that energy, that 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 uh, mentality that we have to riot, and we need to take that energy and we need to push it and exhort it in the proper direction. These people are continuing to take us out. They continuing to keep us down, um, and they continue to to strike. Like I, I, the Trayvon Martin situation is so similar to this situation, but if we would look at it and pay a little more attention to detail it would appear to me that they are actually testing the waters it's almost as if they are just testing to see the temperature of the black community because of some other things that on their agenda that they got in play and in plan um but i say today man that you know we passed time for praying marching and rallying it's time for us to make a stand and really try to be about something. I'm sick and tired of seeing my young thugs out here in the street and I myself a little older, but I have my past as well. Um, but the challenge, like Tupac posed to us back in my day, you know, 15 years ago, you know, when we was the young thugs and, and he posed the question, we out here shooting, killing, robbing and stealing. But the minute the white man come over here and tell you to get on your knees and put your hands behind your head, you buck. I ask the question, if I go rob you, if I if if I go shoot somebody over a pair of shoes or over a drug deal, the consequence that I face is jail or hell. And hell just simply means death. I'm not referring to putting nobody in hell i'm just that's a street slang it's jail or hell you know what i'm saying that means i'm riding it to the finish and whatever the consequence it either they're gonna lock me up or they're gonna bury me but i'm riding it to the end so i pose that question now to my young brothers out here in these streets as this brutality continues to happen to us i say why we ain't jail or hell for something that means something see what i'm saying we shoot at each other knowing that the consequence is prison, knowing that the consequence is death. But yet, when the man comes into our neighborhood, we shuck and grin, we bow down, and we go on ahead and take whatever it is that they put on us, and we're not willing to stand and fight for something that matters. So I say it's time for us to take a stance and be willing to fight for something that matters, man, because they're continuing to push their agenda. It's, it's coming on us. If we would look and pay attention, man, we got more violence. We got more racial injustice happening to us now than what happened in the 50s and the 60s during the racial injustice. Because during Jim Crow, we had Medgar Evers and, you know, we had a couple other situations that occurred. But when those situations occurred, we as a people immediately would come together and be a voice. Even though we only marched and even though we only protested, we still yet came together in unity as a people. But I protest to you now, if we would take an example, for instance, and look at the Trayvon Martin situation, I'm talking about it, but ain't nobody else talking about it. It doesn't come back up anymore. We marched, we wore hoodies and we protested it, you know, for a couple weeks, a couple months, but the minute the uh, the media began to, to ease us or pass us by, the minute his parents got the money and was told to shut up, should I say, and not push the agenda, we shut up. But I say, how are we going to fight for Trayvon if his mom and daddy don't want to fight? See what I'm saying? If they get the money and they custom with getting the money, because you know the money had to come from them, but if they get the money and they choose to not want to fight, then how are we going to fight? Just like Rodney King. If Rodney King say, can't we all get along? Well, we fighting for if he don't want to fight we need something 
to spark us and to get us moving in the right direction. Well, I attest, this Michael Brown situation is just another situation. But the problem is, as we continue to bow down and fold, as we continue to uh, allow them to pr tell us to pray, and we go back and we just let them, let the justice system handle it, the justice system that does not e equality, does not exist, rather, should I say, inequality. As long as we let the justice system handle it, we're going to continue to get done to as we are being done to. Because we're talking about those situations that are aware to us. It's so much stuff that's going on that don't even get reported on a daily basis. They won't even tell us or say nothing about what's going on. And unless it gets national attention, it's swept under the rug. So we got to begin to pay attention, black people. The young brothers that were shot because their music was too loud. Are you kidding me? And then the man gets, he gets uh, attempted murder charges for the people that he shot at. But he gets freed for murder charges for the brother that actually died. Are you kidding me? Come on, man. The woman in Florida, she did the same thing as Ron Zimmerman. Zimmerman killed a young man and took his life. This woman, in fear of being assaulted by a man who was physically dominant to her, she fired warning shots, and they trying to get a woman 15 years for firing a gun, for firing a firearm uh, within this, the area. Did Zimmerman not fire a firearm? Was that not a firearm that he fired that killed a young innocent black man? And again, with the Trayvon situation, there's nothing that you can say that can erase the facts. The facts were this. This man seen this young brother walking. The police told this man, stand down. Do not pursue. We will handle it. So everything that occurred after that point is guilt on Zimmerman's part. I don't care if Trayvon beat the bricks off of him and he felt threatened at that point. So he shot him because they were fighting. Are you kidding me? I'm a black man. I deal with racial inequality on a regular basis. I have been racial profiled for the majority of my life. Myself, if I am walking down the street and I see a man following me in his vehicle, of course I'm going to approach him and say, man, what do you want? Why are you following me? At that point, there may be an altercation that jumps off. And naturally, I may start beating the brakes off of this gentleman. But in that case, does that still justify him to shoot me? Can he say that he's in danger for his life to shoot me, even though I'm a beating him up? But remember, he instigated the, the situation that we involved in. Had he stood down and went about his business as the police instructed him to, to, then nothing would have ever occurred. Trayvon couldn't have approached him. Trayvon couldn't have started a fight with him. You understand what I'm saying? There's always an excuse. Just like now, as we look at this Michael Brown situation, I'm not in St. Louis. I'm not altogether familiar with all the details, but based on what I've read and the little bit that I've heard and the testimony from the witness, one of the brothers, the brother that was walking with the other young brother, Based on the testimony, uh, based on my own situations and experience as a black man in this country, I can say that it sounds to me 100 percent as racial profiling. Because ba based on the young brother's testimony who was walking with Mr. Michael Brown, he said that they were walking on the street and they were a few minutes away from their destination. And the cop pulled up on the side of him and said, get up on the fucking sidewalk. Now, who the hell do you suppose to be that you got the right to tell somebody and in them terms, get on the fucking sidewalk? Are you fucking kidding me? We got a right to do that as a police officer. Of course, the young men may have said something back. I'm not justifying what they said. I'm, it, it don't matter what they said. And so from that point on, then it, he said that he reached up and grabbed his friend by the neck to try to pull him in the police car. So whatever happened. It was an altercation that was instigated by the police officer trying to drag the boy in the car. From my conclusion, the boy probably did fight him off, probably hit him, pushed him, whatever the case may be. The officer then shot in the car. The boy leaves the car. Another testimony of the young lady who was right there witnessing it. The young lady saw the man with his hands up running showing that he was compliant and that he was no longer a threat or a resistance to the officer, but yet they fired again until the young man was dead. You can't tell me 
that this is a strategic, that this is an injustice. Just like the Trayvon, as I go back to that, uh, with Ron Zimmerman. Remember, Ronald Zimmerman had applied for the police academy, but didn't make it, or did he make it? You got to understand, people, this thing is strategic and play and plan what they do. I'll just throw out there as an example some of the possibilities. So Zimmerman applies to police academy. Zimmerman doesn't make the police academy, but they pull Zimmerman to the side and say, hey, we got a special project for you. I believe that Zimmerman was strategically placed. I believe that although Trayvon Martin may not have been the mark himself specifically per se, but I believe that strategically Ronald Zimmerman was delegated to kill a nigga, a black man, at some point in time strategically so that they could test the waters of the atmosphere to see what the reaction of the people would be. And what they sell is exactly what they wanted, that we have become passe since Barack Obama has entered into political office. Since we've received the black president, we are more passe now because our uh, indoctrinated and manipulated mind believes that we have equality. You can never be equal with the people whose total aim is to annihilate you. You could never reach equality. The only thing we can do is, excuse my French, get our shit back. Period. Ain't no equality. We don't want equality. We need our shit back, and then we can recreate a system of true justice and true inequality. There's so many things that they're doing, and we got to begin to open our eyes, people, and pay attention to what's going on around us, or we are going to be wiped out. It's a, they are in the process of preparing to institute a martial law. They waiting on the uprising. And the retaliation of our people so that they can invoke martial law. They waiting on us to raise up in a particular way so that they can justify gunning us down in the streets. So that they can justify the brutality that they want to inflict and enforce so bad. They've already, uh, you know, been putting the sanctions on immigration so that they can replace us in the workforce with the Latino and Mexican population. But again, all of these things play into racism, white supremacy as a structural system dynamic. And people People have to understand racism is not one person not liking another person due to color. Racism is a system that have been embedded into the minds of people. A racism is a mind state. It is a mentality. I declare to you today. And so what happens is if you would pay attention, there is every single culture on the planet of on this planet Earth separates or disassociates themselves with the African-American. The Africans come here and they are shown videos and they have given information and told don't associate with the African-American. They're bad influence. They're bad. And so that's to keep us separated from our roots and to keep us from uniting together. But then it happens in every other community, the Latino and the Mexican. They try to replace us in the workforce with the Latino and the Mexican and the Latino and the Mexican don't understand that we all come from the same genealogical track. We have melanin in our skin, which meaning if they were to date their ancestors back, they would realize that they come from us. But that's what I'm talking about. Racism is a mentality. Racism is a mind state that is indoctrinated. And so this is why you have little girls that cry, or, or should I say that want the white baby doll instead of the black baby doll, because indoctrinated in their mind. This is why we as a people don't love ourselves or don't take our confidence and value in ourselves because racism has been imputed in us through our every day-to-day -day life, through every area of facet of life, their system it fluctuates or influences uh, um, racism on our people. And so this is why we don't understand what's happening and what's going on. And it's going to continue until they reach their aim of annihilating us. I'm not a racist. I am not into uh, raising up a black power nation to where we hate all other races. That is not what I am. But what I am is paying attention to things and seeing them for what they are and not what they appear to be. And what they are is the history of the African, the black man in this planet, and our contribution to creation and all that exists thereafter has been completely wiped and erased 
out of out of out of memory or out of history or so they have attempted to but this is why we have so many monuments archaeological finds throughout history that cannot be erased nor can they be explained through the history that has been given us but they can be explained when the esoteric knowledge is uncovered in the esoteric books and all of this information is uncovered then we can find truths that have been hidden within the lies but again I say to my people I'm here for one reason and one reason only so much information to share as always that I say so much information to dwell into and to give to my people but I'm coming today just on a mere outrage over the Michael Brown situation and again I say I'm not about uh, rioting as in us just destroying and being out there wild, but the spirit of rioting, meaning the spirit that says I'm sick, tired and fed up of dealing with the same nonsense on a regular basis. That spirit is alive in my people. And that is the spirit that we need to grab hold to. But we need to direct it and we need to take all of that energy and it needs to be focused in a proper direction, in a proper avenue so that we can and begin a process of making change and difference within our community because it's far past time. It's 2014 and I would declare to you that if people would begin to pay attention and look at the facts, we are in a worse state now than we were before civil rights. They've inflicted and enforced and wrote in so many statutes and laws uh, uh, and, and they, they've, they've changed so many things within our community that would benefit them but be negative towards us. And we're not paying attention to what's going on. And it's time, people. We must wake up. We got to pay attention. We don't got no leaders in our black community. We ain't had a leader since Malcolm and Martin. Fuck Reverend Al Sharpton. Fuck Reverend Jesse Jackson. Excuse my friends. Fuck them all. They not doing shit. They come to the situation and they tell us, let's pray about it, people. Fuck you and your prayer. It's time for us to make a stance. Not in just violence, but to make a stance as in we not bowing down to y'all our bullshit rules no more but we making a stance and we trying to declare some truth and some righteousness amongst our people like I say all the time so much information to be shared fuck our leaders we ain't got no leaders it's time for us to get together on our own again it's your boy JC but they call me J Free I see cause I'm not blind baby my eyes are open holl at your boy get at me J Free J A Y F R E E I C E E at gmail.com jfreeic at gmail.com or e-l-d-e-r-c-o-n-e at yahoo.com that's eldercone at yahoo.com get at your boy i hope to hear from y'all again